Chapter 7, also about ethos, is about practical wisdom. He also calls this craft. And so this is really mostly about experience. Uh, it can be some traits you have, like um, common sense, and he'll talk about it in another chapter later, sussing ability, like that ability to figure out here's where the issue is and this is what the problem is. Some people are really good problem solvers. All of those would go into the category of practical wisdom. This is like what you know and what you have done. So the three things he talks about being important for practical wisdom. The first one is show off your experience. And keep in mind, especially when you start applying for jobs and internships and stuff like that, when you talk about your experience, you are not bragging. Bragging is more like bragging about character traits. I'm really smart. I'm really honest. That kind of stuff. That comes off as bragging. But I have done these things is not bragging. It's a statement of fact. So keep that in mind. You can brag about yourself without really bragging when you talk about experiences you have. So you want to let people know that you have relevant experience. You want to what he do what he calls bending the rules. You want to show that you're knowledgeable enough about something that you don't think there's only one way to do it. So cooking is a really great example of this. Like if you're first starting to cook, you're going to be like, I have to do exactly what the recipe says every step of the way. But as you start getting more knowledgeable about things, you might start changing things up. I want to cut this this way. I want to use this seasoning instead. So you know, like there's certain things about a recipe that you can't change, but there might also be some things that you can adapt it and change it up. And you're showing practical wisdom when you get to the point that you can do that. Uh, and then seeming to take the middle course. And so the idea behind that is... There is value in moderation, like locating yourself toward the middle of an issue. We tend to uh, be dismissive of people who are extreme in their views. If you have what we call an extremist view, it's very easy to dismiss you. Um, and as maybe a less argumentative way of explaining this, somebody who's like always super emotional, like always angry or um, always sad. It's really hard to take them seriously being sad this time or angry this time because they're always that way. If they're always up here with their emotions, uh, nothing stands out and it just sort of starts to become the same. And so the idea is if you are a moderate person, let's say emotionally, if you're not usually super emotional and then all of a sudden on this day, your emotions are up here and people can tell because you have that track record of moderation, people are going to take those emotions more seriously. The person who's always sad, if you see him sad that day, you're going to be like, okay, I'm not even going to ask because it's probably just another story. But someone who's never seemed sad, they're all of a sudden sad. You're going to be like, what's going on with you today? What's what's happening? Can I help? Th that kind of thing, because it's different from the norm. Uh, most people kind of fall closer to the middle on issues. And so the closer you can locate yourself to the middle as often as possible, uh, the more people you're going to reach. It's sort of like there's a bell curve, and we'll talk about this in class, that if you locate yourself way at one end of the bell curve or the other, you're losing all the people at the opposite end. But if you manage to locate yourself more in the middle where the most people are, that is going to find you the broadest audience. And so the idea of not jumping to extremes too often, uh, that is a part of practical wisdom. So you want to show off your experience, bend the rules, and then appear to take the middle course. Those are the aspects he's saying are important for establishing our practical wisdom.